Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be using the Smashville Predators thanks to a comment I saw. And no, I feel like I don't really use Nashville that much, so... We're going to be using them today, and every time we lose in overtime, we have to make a trade. I'm not really setting any specifics for the trade. It could be any trade, as insignificant or important as I want it to be. And of course, we're not counting preseason, because who cares about preseason? If you are, for some reason, a preseason aficionado, then I apologize, but I simply could not care less. So here's the squad at the moment we could definitely use in addition to that first line. The depth is okay. Defensively, we have a very good left side, and then our right side side is sort of lacking but you know what it is what it is at least we have one good side in net we got Kevin Lankinen and you see what I see sorrow so that is a great starting goaltender I think that we'll be leaving him the whole time my two main concerns would be maybe adding a good right-handed defenseman and on top of that trying to add to this first line a little bit but we could also beef up the depth let the games begin how long will it take for us to get our first overtime loss knowing my luck it's probably going to be the first game shootout win so we were very close there's a regulation loss and there we go a shootout loss to the LA Kings I'm counting that you know it's still overtime technically basically every time the third number there increments we're making a trade I'm just looking at the trading block there to see if there's any players that really jump out they do have some good players but those contracts are not gonna work for us wait a minute Dougie's a right-handed defenseman he is making nine million though so this could be tricky it doesn't even feel like we have that many big contracts here I mean there are some big contracts but for the most part it doesn't seem outrageous I'm surprised we're so close to the cap I really doubt this is gonna work especially because we're asking them to retain a million dollars on his salary and we bring in another really big contract here I don't want to get rid of Sanford because I already said I want to beef up our depth but you know what I might have to pull the trigger on this one. Let's see. It's probably not going to go through anyway, but we'll try it. No. So that's not happening. We would probably have to give up a first. And I don't know if I actually want to do that for Dougie, although it would be a very, very good addition to the team. I'm going to try a next year's second. And if that's nowhere close, then I'll try adding a next year's third. And that will be it. Trade rejected. So let me add a, well, not necessarily next year's third. I'll just add a third. Proposed trade. And no. All right. So I'm not going to bother with Dougie for now. It's contract is just too unrealistic I mean we could add DeMello but we already have 82 overall right-handed defensemen so I don't think that's really going to help us that much we could make an effort for Spurgeon I really don't want to get rid of Duchesne but that contract is just so big I mean Spurgeon's isn't much better so we're not really helping ourselves there but we are gaining two overall and an x-factor plus some abilities for defense you know what I'm gonna sub it out with Ryan Johansson and then I think yeah he's playing second line right now so I'm probably just gonna move Duchesne up Will this even go through the way it is? No, it will not. I could try to add a draft pick that might entice them a little bit more. Okay, I've added a third round draft pick. Will that make it go through? Still no. What about a next year's second round draft pick? Come on, Minnesota. Work with me here. Trade accepted. All right. Oh no, a dash three. Okay, that made it a little bit better. Now we just have a zero and a dash one, but Duchesne will be on the first line. And now we have Spurgeon playing with Yossi, which gets a plus three. That looks nice. All it cost us was a a little bit of offense we got the rangers no stops him stops him oh, okay well it doesn't matter that was a regular loss but another overtime loss against the rangers right after so we have to make another move i'm thinking we could do something like this we get two players that sort of make up the same contract that one player has at the moment i mean they're 83 and 82 overall respectively but i think this should be a good move because then we could trade them individually and not have to worry about one big contract trying to get rid of this contract on the other hand is going to be a pain i doubt they're going to say yes to that yeah didn't think so a third and a fourth maybe probably not oh they will say yes to that okay hold up what if i do a third and a fifth are they gonna tell me to sweeten it a little bit or will it still go through proposed trade okay can i do a third and a sixth round pick let's try that on for size will they still accept it Yes, they will. All right, let's just go for it then. Roslevic is our new first line center. Let's go. Minnesota Wild will hand us another L, but it was not in overtime, so we are safe. Wow, we suck. We actually suck really bad. We got a 4-3 W against the Islanders there, and now we are on a Western Canadian trip here. A big 6-4 win over the Calgary Flames. We got the Edmonton Oilers up next. Another W, all right. We are swinging upward here. Ooh, okay. That is a huge Western trip. Chicago is up next and another win. Wow, we are on a roll right now. Let's go, boys. Another one. This is absolutely insane. Wow. 
I'm shocked. I don't know what's going on right now, but I don't expect this to last for much longer. There we go. Now it's time for an Eastern Canadian trip. We have the Toronto Maple Leafs starting first. That'll be a 3-1 L. The Ottawa Senators up next. They have made some big and good moves in the offseason. And we have the Montreal Canadiens finally here. Another win. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim will beat us to nothing. We have the Golden Knights coming up here who have a record of 9-9-1 and they will advance to 10-9-1 after defeating us. New Jersey will be an overtime win. So that one was very close. Colorado, our next opponent, not doing so good, which is very strange. And a shootout loss. So we have to make a move. It's starting to feel like the players that are matching the block really starting to dwindle. They just put Ryan Johansson right back on the block. I think Felino would be a really good add here. Boone Jenner would be a a loss but Felino would be a great player to bring on board and I think there was another player that we could maybe go after as well yeah we could possibly pick up Goudreau as part of this move get another centerman I mean sure he's only 81 overall but the man does have 92 discipline the value looks somewhat even they aren't interested in Boone Jenner which makes me think this won't go through but it's definitely worth a try it will. Okay, can we get anything else back now? That's the question. I added a fourth rounder. I absolutely don't think that's going to happen. So they said no, and I can't really... Uh, let's try a fifth. They might say yes to that. Proposed trade, they will. All right, we got a fifth out of it as well. Here's the new offense. We have Forsberg, Roslevic, and Niederreiter. I feel like we have to wait till later in the season before some of the big pieces start to get put on the trading block. But yeah, for now, we're kind of just making some... Somewhat minor moves. Let's try not to go back to back again here. Columbus will be a 3-2L. At least it wasn't in overtime. We got the Boston Bruins. They will dish us another loss. How will Montreal fare against the Nashville Predators? They will get shut out. 2-0. Detroit, they have also been making some incredible offseason moves. They defeat us 2-0. We get a taste of our own medicine getting shut out, and another overtime loss. I'm gonna try to make an extremely unsubstantial trade here. Just get Edler for absolutely no reason. He might not even get put in the lineup, but it's a trade nonetheless. So let's go ahead and try to propose that rejected so we can't do a fourth they do want next year's fourth which makes it a little bit more appetizing but if not then we could go for the third and we will call it a day well they might not even accept this one proposed trade they will. All right, there we go. Yeah, he didn't get put in. He's just scratched at this point. However, he could be used for future trades. So if we want to make a trade and we need a little bit more to make it go through, now we have a guy who can help that push happen. Or if we want to trade someone else, he could now fill in for defense. So that's good it's to have those pieces there as insurance. 14, 13, and 4. Now 14, 14, and 4. So we're not really having the best season to say the least here. That's putting it very politely. The Winnipeg Jets, we will defeat them, however, 3-1. We got Flo Rida up next. They are doing very good, and we beat them 4-1. What about the Dallas Stars? Can we defeat them? We sure can. Washington Capitals will be a 5-2 L, and now we have the Columbus Blue Jackets up next with a fairly similar record to us. Chicago, our next opponent, they are struggling. A big shootout win. An overtime loss to the Coyotes, 3-2, will now require us to make another move. I'm trying for another very insignificant trade here, and it is rejected. They do want late rounds, so I'm going to try to push a 7th through here. This might happen. Proposed trade. Nope, it is rejected. His trade value is literally nothing. How are you saying no to this? Maybe I'll just give them a 5th and send them on their merry way. There you go. Oh, a no-brainer all of a sudden. Hey, you move up two rounds, and all of a sudden you're a trading genius. They did put Boyle in the lineup, though, so he is going to be a piece of the team. Two wins in a row after picking him up as well. Might as well make it three while you're at it. St. Louis Blues, another one. All right, Brian Boyle was clearly the move. Detroit just smacked us around 7-2. That might be the biggest loss we've had so far this year. And are we on a Western Canadian trip here again? We got the Oilers. That will be a 5-4-L. I believe Vancouver is the break. So will we have to make a trade by this Dallas game? No, we will not. That was a regulation loss. The sad thing is with our record, we're still third in the division right now. So our division not having a great season. We just lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. The trade deadline is in sight. Seattle Kraken will be our next opponent. So I think if we lose in overtime, I'm going to try to make a big move next and really try to spice things up here. 5-3 win to the San Jose Sharks. The Dallas Stars will be a 4-0 loss. They shut us out. Now I kind of want an overtime loss because I want to make a big move to add to that first line. But of course, because I want one, we probably will not get one. Pittsburgh Penguins, 7-4-W. No way, there's only two games left. Come on, give me one more overtime loss, Toronto. Do it. Absolutely do it. Wait, no! 
Okay, I'll take a W, but still. I guess I waited too long. I thought there was going to be some more overtime losses, but apparently not. And there are some good players that are available right now too, so that really sucks. Why on earth would you put Spencer Knight on the block? And also, why is his trade value so low? Why couldn't these guys be on the block when I made the last trade, huh? Why'd you have to wait till the trade deadline? I thought for sure I was going to have the chance to make another trade, and I was going to make it a big one, but we went on a long streak without going to overtime. Well, not without going to overtime, but without losing in overtime, I should say. Let's sim the rest of the year and see if we can make playoffs. I feel like it is somewhat unlikely, but as I mentioned, our division is not doing so hot, so the chances are still there. I don't think it's going to happen. We have 35 wins, and okay, well, if we can win these last two games... There's a shot. No, there is not. We suck. Well, that was a failure. Note to self, don't wait so long next time. I wonder if it'd be interesting to do a video, like how many overtime losses we have at the trade deadline is how many trades we have to make. You know what? I might just do that. The Boston Bruins went on to win the President's Trophy with 112 points. And I am not sure where we finished, but it was not a pretty season, to say the least. The 21st place Minnesota Wild make it in. That is absolutely outrageous, and we are way down here at 27. Philip Forsberg put up 63 points, and then we got 59 from Roman Yossi. 54 from Jack Rozovic, so he actually did pretty good. Granny Smith and Felina both put up 51. Saros didn't have a great time. He went 28, 32, and 7 with a 905, 289. Lankinen did not play nearly as many games, but he went 9, 7, and 0 with a 980. And 255. Freddie Anderson led the league with 42 wins. He had a 919 save percentage as well, which is tied with Gibson for the best on the front page here. Quinn Hughes led defenseman with 74 points. We got 71 from Klingberg, 67 from Carlson, and 64 from McCarr. At least we had a top five defenseman. Nobody was able to break 100 this year. Pasternak got the most with 95. I, did I say that weird? I felt like I said that weird, but maybe not. Ovechkin put up 94 and 46 goals. We got 49 from Matt. Matthews, which looks like the most. Stamkos put up 30 points in 23 playoff games, and Ehlers put up 29 in 17. Connor put up 27 in 17, and Shifley put up 23 in 17. So that first line for the Winnipeg Jets absolutely went off. And then Nemesnikov put up 21 in 23 games. We got Hedman with 21. Corey Perry puts up 20. Vazzy went 16, 6, and 1 with two shutouts and a 925 save percentage. Jonathan Quick actually put up four shutouts, so he had a really good run as well. I will just go through the awards here real quick there's the team trophies and for individual players we got pasta with the art ross and the heart hughes gets the norris pasta gets the lady bang Yarvis with the Calder, Stamkos gets the Conn Smythe, the Vesna goes to Shesterkin, so does the William M. Jennings, the Bill Masterton goes to Brodeen, Madden gets the Jack Adams, Selkie goes to Bergeron, Pasta with the Ted Lindsay, and Matthews gets the Rocket Richard. There's the playoff tree, we're gonna chalk that one up to a my bad, I waited too long, I thought there was gonna be more overtime losses, but there wasn't. I made two rather insignificant trades in a row, and then I was gonna do a Hail Mary on the next one, and we never got to it, but you know what, it happens sometimes. Let me know what you guys think about the overtime losses at trade deadline idea and if you have any other ideas be sure to leave them down below as well i appreciate you guys i will see you soon